so, Terry, thanks for your time, first yeah. of all. Um, big fight coming up against uh, Nina Bradley soon. Uh, just talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's for the WBC International. Um, we're looking at, hopefully, get the win on this fight. We could f- look for a world title. Um, but we're not rushing anything. So Nina's just fought the girl who I fought, uh, Ferici. don't know how you say his second name. Right. But um, So Nina fought her for the Commonwealth. And then I fought for each after mm. two rounds and stopped her. So we're calling out Nina really. <laughs> Hopefully get a good win against Nina and then work his way up from there. Mm. And that was on the Sheffield show, wasn't it? The the Kelbrook show. That yeah. that last win just talked to me a little bit about about that fight and that that um, whole experience really. It was a big stage to box on. So um, Andrew told me the what we had Anthony from gym and me. Oh God, it's tired. It's all right. Take time. Um. So and Anthony and me were on Sheffield show, mm. so we had a big. I was supposed to be just on the um, opening at show, so I weren't going out live or anything like that. Um, Anthony was live on Facebook, and then the day of the fight, Andrew rang me saying, "What do you reckon to um, go in live on TV?" Mm. So we went. We went up to eight rounds. Um, went out live, opened show, and got the good win. Good solid win. So the the eight rounds that was just decided on the day. Yeah, so, on the day. I went. I w- I would do my first six rounds. No, I've done six rounds before. We were supposed to do six rounds again, mm. and then it Andrew sprung it on me on day to do eight rounds. So take everything as it comes. Yeah, I I was at all experience of you know just the interview afterwards and you know walking in front of that. Obviously, it wasn't the packed out crowd, but still yeah. a very very sizable crowd. Um, I think like the day before weigh in, seeing all the like Kelbrook, yeah. all these top name boxers. I think it was a bit of a shock to me and it didn't settle until I got home after I weighed in. I thought, wow, thinking everyone who I just actually met. And then the day of the fight, going to the venue, so trying to soak everything in, it just felt like a dream really until I won the fight, got home, woke up next morning and I'm like, wow, that really did happen. So, How does that compare to the <laughs> small hall shows that you've, you've previously been and on? To be honest, the, the one I fought at before at Barnsley, what well, that, like, from... I used to box at, well, from boxing the Dome, Doncaster Dome, we went to Barnsley in November, um, and that were a good venue, but made by Andrew. So then, I think stepping up to the Sheffield one, the transition from Dome to Barnsley to Sheffield yeah. made it a lot easier. Mm. And I was I was there that night, and there was still plenty of noise for you coming out. Uh, and from, it, it, from Sheffield? Yeah, 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 there was plenty, plenty of support for yourself. Yeah, must a been. lot of support, to be honest. It's good. Um, I've done over, like, 150 for the next fight, so... Wow. Our support is very much appreciated, really. Mm. It's the only way, way I can do what I'm doing. Yeah, um, just talk to me a little bit about Nina Bradley. How much how much do you know about her, and, and what can you what can you tell us? Tell um, us I've about seen her? bits of Nina through social media, obviously. Um, I think the group of women boxing is small, so we get to see a lot of female boxers all over the country. They could pop up more on your mm. news feed and stuff. Yeah. So uh, we, I've been following Nina for a while. I did speak with her after my fight in Sheffield and then I said to Andrew can you get me a fight with Nina it's something that it'll be a good good statement to get a win against Nina so Andrew's worked his magic and made it happen mm. and, and for a WBC international so yeah yeah and you, you're only you're only 22 it seems sort of is it early in your career to take this opportunity why why, why now um I say I'm only 22 and I'm just starting but like time wait for no one so why not Crack on now while I can, while I'm young and fit. Mm. And is it sort of? Do you feel that you, you know? Obviously, male boxers usually go into those title fights when they're about ten, twelve, and do you feel that women boxers generally sort of move at a quicker pace because yeah. there's not obviously yeah, that, that said, depth of, of said competition. that women kind of get fast tracked. Mm. But I guess it, you're either at your low level, so the girls who have mainly fought, um, getting stoppages against them, and then you jump in to the higher level so there's no real in between it's like mm. you're low and then you're high class yeah elite boxers and how many rounds is the fight against Nina is that 10 rounds yeah over 10 rounds hopefully it'll not right. last 10 rounds <laughs> <laughs> so was there any thoughts of trying to get an 8 round room before or was it just you uh, just well that, just the one at Sheffield were an 8 round oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, sorry, yeah. it obviously hadn't gone my first 6 round as well that didn't go it's full 6 rounds but I'm getting plenty of rounds in in gym and sparring so mm. can comfortably do 10 rounds and it's a big card that you feature on as well, obviously Josh Whale on it, Jason Cunningham as yeah. well, so really good bill to be a part of. Yeah, very good bill. Josh Whale's second, like, British, he's going for a British title in his different mm. weight. Um, 
Jason Cunningham and Lee Appleyard also on there. Levi Kinsiona from Sheffield. Mm. So it's going to be a good good build to be on. Mm. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about your your journey into boxing. How did how did it all start? How did you how did you become uh, a boxer? I've always been sporty. Right. So at school a bit of a tomboy. Um, started off with football. Uh, played football for a good four or five years, and then I started. Well, I watched Jack Osborne and Jungle and Junkie on TV once, and they were boxing on there. So my dad were like, "What do you reckon?" Said giving it a try. So I said, "Yeah." Um, we had some neighbours who also boxed, so we went to their gym. And then ever since then, I fell in love with sport. Then I was trying to juggle my boxing and football at the same time, but it just weren't working. So. I decided to knock football in Eden. What what sort of level did you get to at football? Was it? Um, well, I was just playing for a local local club, but right. then I did get scouted for Barnsley, but obviously didn't go ahead with it just because I wanted to put all my focus into boxing. Mm. How was that first sort of experience of stepping into the gym for the first time? Can you is that a vivid memory or? Yeah, I do remember. It's just I can just remember seeing loads of boys. And I was <laughs> like, but I think because I've been around boys while I played football, because I did play for a boys team when I was younger. Mm. It's been no different. I always see my son as one at lads, yeah. which is strange. But so I, I always like to get stuck in sparring with boys. It's no problem for me. All right, so you spar with males yeah, at the minute, males, yeah? yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. How, how how do you find that? Is it what's what's that experience like? It's I'd say now 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 I'm a lot older and sparring with the men in the gym. It's a lot tougher because their physical presence and power. So a lot more than when I was younger sparring with the the boys mm. so it is a big difference um now men they really just move me about a bit they can't go all out because i'll probably get knocked out but um we're trying to find a lot more female sparring to make it more competitive for me mm. is that tough to find at the minute that, that female sparring or that, is it i think is it getting, we, yeah we do is have it getting to, easier yeah we do have to travel for sparring but the links through social media we can make it a lot easier to organize mm. sparring you mentioned when you first walked into the gym that you were surrounded by boys. Was that sort of? Did you feel out of place? Or well, you know how how was that sort of? I think mentally? If, I think if I'd not done football with boy, with a group of boys before, I would have felt out of place. But I settled straight in. Mm. And how did that develop into your amateur career? Then you won a couple of junior ABAs, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, three, I won three times national champion right. and youth silver medalist in Poland. Okay. Um, what was the question again? Uh, just how, how did you find your amateurs? Just, yeah, just oh, yeah, I think I had that. a good good amateur career. I didn't have that many fights, to be honest. Right. But I only had 19 fights. Um, 17 as a junior, 2 as a senior. Okay. Um, my last two senior fights, I had a few years, well, like two years out, come back, fought, and I lost both to the same girl on a split decision on her own show, and I was just, like, robbery, really. Right, so okay. that's when I knocked it in Ed for about four years then. And then Andrew sent me a message asking if I want to go pro, so it's the best thing I've ever done. Mm. And we were mentioning a bit off, off recording about your full time at the minute and you've also combining that with a bit of personal training as well. Just yeah, so me a bit about that. trying to squeeze everything in a minute so I can be full time at gym. Um, so I'll be training first thing in the morning, doing personals then. Then I can go home, have something to eat, and then I'll be back in gym, um, coaching schools. It's nice to give something back to what I've been taught. Um, I currently just applied for my pro licence second trainer, right. so when I can experience cornering yeah, yeah, yeah. during professional fights, and so hopefully that goes, goes well and I get that. Mm. Um, yeah, and then I'll be back in at night, training myself, coaching again, coaching classes, and then it's own time, have some food, bed, and back up to it again <laughs> next day. <laughs> Tough schedule. Um, how have you found, obviously you've got to sell tickets, I'm presuming, for you know these small old shows, how, yeah. how have you found those experiences. I'd say as a boxer that's the hardest thing you could possibly do is try to sell your tickets but luckily enough for me my partner she's got a big family and they all support me so she's done me around 100 tickets for this just for this fight and it helps out a lot um obviously then I've got people who I have links with in gym buy tickets and stuff so they've gone quite well for this fight to be honest mm. and my support and um, support's getting bigger and bigger um people messaging off social media wanting tickets sending out and stuff like that so mm. the fan base is growing is that Should something that you <laughs> is that something that you try and work on your, your social media and those types of things like like you said it is something that's a big part yeah of so it? instagram for me is my biggest right so trying to get a good following on there um and then i've got facebook and twitter i should use my twitter more but 
I don't really understand it. So I just <laughs> stick to Instagram and Facebook. Right. Um, what do you make of sort of the women's <laughs> scene at the minute uh, in, in boxing? Just just generally, that strong? You feel it's growing at the I moment? I think it is definitely growing. One hundred percent. There's like every week I'm seeing females who are turning out professional and stuff, and it's nice. It is nice to see. It's not just a man's sport. Us women can do it as well. Um, Obviously, you like Katie Taylor, Nicola Adams, all them turning over as professional mm. has paved the way really for us to see that we can do it and we belong in this spot as well. It's good to see them getting big TV coverage yeah, as well. Definitely yeah, definitely. Like Katie Taylor headlining um, that show in America should that time, can't yeah, remember which yeah. one, but just a female headlining a, a big sellout venue show. It's mm. good. And we mentioned now, obviously, our, our theme for this is about women in sport. Um, how do you feel that boxing can be beneficial to women? Um, I think it's good to come, like, come into a gym. Um, of if others around you, you can make friends, um, get rid of a lot of stress. Hundred mm. percent. Once you punch them bags, you've got <laughs> no stress. Um, yeah, I think it's good stress relief. It makes you feel good once you've left gym. You got some training in. It's all nice and relaxed. Not too crazy. Mm. But. You feel that it's increasing at the moment, you particularly in this gym. Yeah, we have got a f- we've got a few women in, and especially my personal, so wanting to come in and learn boxing, probably f- self defence and stuff like that. Mm. Um, the schools that are coming in, they've got females also in them classes, so it's good. Good stuff, Terry. Thank you. Oh, never dropped my phone. <laughs>